friends, seekers of peace and harmony, everyone needs peace, harmony in life. Because everyone keeps on facing agitation, misery, unhappiness, due to various reasons. Unwanted things keep on happening in the life. Wanted things may happen, may not happen in life. Whenever an unwanted thing happens in the life, one feels miserable, becomes unhappy. Whenever a wanted thing does not happen in the life, some obstacle comes, <clears throat> a barrier comes, Again, one feels miserable, unhappy. How to come out of this unhappiness? How to come out of this misery and live a peaceful life, harmonious life, good for oneself and good for others? Whenever one becomes miserable, one never keeps this misery limited to oneself. One keeps on throwing this misery on others, makes the entire atmosphere around one miserable. Everyone who comes in contact with this person at that time becomes miserable, unhappy. Certainly, this is not a good way of life. This is not an art of living. One must learn an art of living, how to live peacefully and harmoniously within, and how to generate nothing but peace and harmony for others. And this is what <clears throat> one learns by this technique of Vipassana meditation. Don't get scared by this word meditation because people have misused this word in the name of meditation. So much exploitation is going on, exploiting people. For many it has become a business a means of livelihood to earn money. Vipassana is not for that. Vipassana is to serve people. <clears throat> Misery all around. And if one starts exploiting people, one helps to multiply this misery, not to eradicate the misery. This is totally different from what many people are doing in the name of meditation. Vipassana is not a cult, it is not a dogma, it is not a blind belief, a blind faith, not to convert people from one organized religion to another organized religion. Vipassana has nothing to do with all that. The misery, the unhappiness is not limited to a particular sect, a particular community. It is universal. Vipassana is a remedy, a universal remedy for this universal malady. One becomes miserable, agitated, unhappy, because one generates defilements in the mind. One reacts to the situation wrongly. Whenever one keeps on reacting, one keeps on generating negativity, one keeps on multiplying the misery. Apparently it looks that one is miserable because something unwanted has happened in the life or something wanted has not happened in the life. 
but this is partial truth apparent truth the real truth is the habit pattern of the mind which keeps on reacting all the time whenever it faces something pleasant it starts reacting immediately with craving with clinging and loses the balance becomes tense whenever it faces something unpleasant again it reacts blindly immediately with aversion with hatred generates tension becomes miserable this has become the habit pattern of the mind whether one is a hindu or a christian or a muslim or a jew or a buddhist makes no difference whether one is an american or a indian or a russian or a chinese makes no difference whenever one reacts blindly one generates tension becomes miserable bound to become miserable the law of nature is universal the law of nature does not favor somebody who starts calling himself a buddhist if tomorrow the entire population of the world will start calling them as buddhist the misery will not go away they will be as miserable as they are now <clears throat> changing names changing dresses wearing a dress of this color or that color wearing this symbol or that symbol this rosary or that rosary does not help one has to change the mind the habit of the mind the blind reacting habit of the mind and this is what vipassana helps you to do whenever any negativity arises in the mind and the result of which one becomes miserable the normal tendency is to have an escape to run away to run away from the problem if one is very miserable tries to forget about the misery runs to some place of entertainment amusement to a cinema to a theater opens a tv or goes to a bar tries to forget no solution escape is no solution again you have to face the same problem and again you keep on reacting in the same way there is no solution similarly there is another escape <clears throat> some people do not want to run away for these sensual pleasures to come out of their mental misery they seek some spiritual solution there are many kinds of meditation where you try to concentrate your mind by verbalization you start repeating a word chanting some meditation you imagine some shape some form mind gets concentrated you feel you are out of your misery to some extent it is true but again it does not take you to the stage where you are free from all your misery at the deepest level of your mind only at the surface of the mind one feels that i am now free from misery you have changed your attention diverted your attention from the cause of the misery to something else which you liked although not running to sensual pleasures but now you have another kind of intoxication spiritual intoxication intoxication is intoxication you can't come out of your misery people who explored the truth explored the truth of the entire physical phenomenon the entire mental phenomenon 
and reach the ultimate truth, found out that escape is no solution. Better face it. The only solution is to face the problem. If a negativity has arisen, just start observing it. Anger has arisen, just start observing the anger. Passion has arisen, observe the passion. Fear has arisen, observe the fear. Because whenever you divert your attention, you have really suppressed that particular defilement deep inside your mind and it keeps on multiplying at the deepest level of the mind, you are not rooted it out. There are two extremes. Either you give a free license to the particular defilement which has come in your mind by some physical action or vocal action. This is one extreme. Other is to suppress it. And both the extremes are equally harmful. A middle path is found by the enlightened persons. Observe it. Neither suppression nor giving it a free license. Observe it. Observe it. Easy to say. Easy to accept it at the intellectual level. But very difficult to practice it. Because whenever a defilement starts in the mind, very quickly it overpowers you. Whenever anger starts, it overpowers you. You can't observe it. Even if somebody reminds you, well, look, there is anger, you better observe it. And you try to observe it. It is so difficult. How can you observe anger? There is no shape of anger. There is no color of anger. Even if you close your eyes and try to observe anger, what will come in your mind is the object of your anger. And that is the stimuli. It stimulates your anger. The more you think of it, the more your anger multiplies. You can't come out of it. To observe abstract anger and similarly abstract fear, passion, any defilement, to observe abstract cutting it off from all the stimulation, the objects outside, is really difficult, rather impossible for an ordinary person. If it is so difficult, if it is rather impossible for an ordinary person, then it is no solution. But an enlightened person, when he finds out a way, he finds out a workable way, which anybody, everybody, an ordinary human being, can work. Someone who has become enlightened, he becomes enlightened by exploring the truth to the ultimate level, realizes certain truths. And one very important truth that one realizes becoming enlightened is that as and when you generate any defilement on your mind, anger, hatred, ill will, animosity, passion, fear, envy, jealousy, anything. Two things start happening simultaneously at the physical level. One thing at a little gross level, your breath does not remain a normal breath. It will become hard. It will become fast. Whenever you generate anger or passion or fear or anything, the breath can never remain normal. One reality. Another reality at a little subtler level. Whenever you generate any impurity on the mind, the entire body, there will be some biochemical reaction. You will start feeling certain sensations, maybe pressure, maybe tension, maybe heat, maybe perspiration, maybe throbbing, something, some sensation or the other, you are bound to feel. You can't observe anger as anger. Passion is passion, fear is fear. You can't observe any negativity, any impurity, abstract impurity, but certainly if you practice for a few days, you can observe your respiration. You can observe the sensation on your body. And while you start observing sensation or respiration, 
you are not running away from the reality, you are facing the reality as it is. Because it is just the other side of the coin. On one side of the coin is the defilement of the mind. On the other side of the coin is the respiration and the sensation on the body. If you are observing respiration and sensation on the body, you will find that you are not suppressing that particular impurity that is a reason. Layers after layers of this impurity will get peeled off. You are not giving it a free license at the vocal level or the physical level. You are just observing your respiration, your sensation, and you find that you are coming out of your misery. You are coming out of that particular negativity. For this, some amount of practice is necessary. And for this reason, these Vipassana courses are held here as well as in different parts of the world. A meditation center is established here. Many a times a question arises, why a meditation center? It is just because people do not know what meditation is and what Vipassana meditation is. Therefore, they can't value it properly. Otherwise, they won't ask a question like this. How can somebody ask a question that why there is a school in this village? Why there is a college in this district? Why there is a hospital here? Because it is so useful for the society. Similarly, if one realizes what this meditation is, what Vipassana is, this question will automatically go away. A time will come sooner rather than later when such Vipassana meditation centers will be everywhere, in every village, in every district, in every town, in every city, in every country, everywhere around the world, because this is a necessity. People require some solution to come out of their misery. Without harming others, live a life where you don't harm others, where you don't harm yourself. The first step that Vipassana teaches you when someone comes to a course, the first thing one has to take a vow, at least for the days when one is in a center for meditation, for three days or ten days or more, whatever it is, one has to abstain from all kinds of physical and vocal actions which harm others. Abstain from killing. Abstain from stealing. Abstain from sexual misconduct. One should not well, staying in a, in a center like this, one has to observe complete celibacy, but in day-to-day -day life, no adultery, no raping. One has to live a good sexual life, good householder's life, not speaking lies, not using harsh words which hurt other people, not using the words of backbiting which may create separation between friends, not to talk useless words which waste your time and waste other people's time, and not to get intoxicated. One abstains from all these vocal and physical actions which harm other people. They not only harm other people, they also harm us, one who breaks these shilas, one cannot break this shila unless one generates tremendous amount of negativity in the mind. You can't kill somebody unless you generate tremendous amount of anger or hatred or ill will. You can't commit any of these wrong actions of body and mind unless you generate defilement in the mind. And as and when you generate defilement in the mind, you become unhappy, you become miserable. So the first step, not to harm others, because by harming others, indirectly you started harming yourself simultaneously. Then and there you started harming yourself because you started defiling your mind. And every defilement of the mind is a great misery for you. And then you start learning a technique to develop the mastery over the mind. So long as you are not the master of your own mind, you have to keep on rolling in different kinds of miseries. So the next step is 
how to observe the respiration as it comes in, as it goes out. The habit of the mind was to keep on running here and there, wandering here and there. Now you train your mind to be just aware of the respiration, the natural respiration as it comes in, as it goes out. When you are observing respiration, you are not converting yourself from this religion or that religion. As when you were observing these five moral rules, you are not converting yourself from one religion to other religion. So also developing the mastery over the mind with the observation of respiration is not developing any kind of cult or dogma or involving yourself in any kind of mysticism. This is the reality of the moment you are breathing in, you are breathing out. For three days when you work on this awareness of respiration, you start feeling sensations around this area. Natural, normal, physical sensations. Again, no mysticism, nothing. This is the nature of the body. Every moment there is some sensation or the other. Your mind was never sharp enough, not sensitive enough to feel it. Now you are able to feel it. And from the fourth day onwards, you start feeling sensations throughout the body. Again, no mysticism. You are doing all this to explore the truth within yourself. This entire physical structure, the entire mental structure, the combination of these two, how they are functioning, how they become a cause for your misery. As I said, apparently it looks as if the cause of misery is outside. Certain unwanted thing has happened or wanted thing has not happened. This is the apparent truth. But deep inside, if you go, you will find the real truth, the cause of your misery lies inside. The habit pattern of the mind to react to these outside situations. Whenever something wanted happens outside in the world, you get a very pleasant sensation throughout the body. Law of nature is such. And whenever you feel a very pleasant sensation in the body, you start generating craving, you start generating clinging and you lose the balance of the mind, you become tense. So also whenever anything unpleasant happens in the world outside, anything unwanted happens in the world outside, you get a very unpleasant sensation throughout the body, which you are not aware because you are not accustomed to observe your sensations within the body. Unpleasant sensation has started. And as soon as unpleasant sensation starts in the body, the mind has a tendency to react. It starts reacting immediately with aversion, with hatred, it becomes tense. Outside object and your reaction to it, between these two, there is a gap, a missing link, and that missing link is the sensation on the body. If one learns all about these sensations and all about the mind, how it reacts to these sensations and trains the mind not to react to these sensations, then whatever the stimuli of outside world it may be, it won't affect you. You will remain equanimous in every situation. Mind will remain balanced. And with a balanced mind, when you take any action, it is a real action. And action is always positive. One remains miserable because one lives the life of reaction. The entire life is life of blind reaction, blind reaction, which makes one very miserable. A situation has a reason, pleasant or unpleasant. And if you learn a technique by which you can observe your own sensations and remain equanimous even for a few moments, then whatever decision you make, whatever action you take is always positive. It is never negative. It won't harm you. It won't harm anybody. A big change will start in life. So when one comes to a course like this for 10 days, one does not come to get oneself converted from one religion to another religion because that is not going to help at all. Conversion is of course there. One gets converted from misery to happiness. One gets converted from ignorance to enlightenment. One gets converted from bondage to liberation. Conversion is there. One lives a very happy life, peaceful life, harmonious life which is good for oneself and good for others. Not that in 10 days one becomes perfect, not possible. But in 10 days you get a technique as to how to face the situations, different situations in the life, how to face them, how to face them 
remaining equanimous. After a 10 day course, still you will be reacting, not that all the reaction will go away, but you will find that the reaction is not that deep as it used to be before. The reaction is not for that long period as it used to be before. That means you are coming out of your reaction, you are coming out of your misery. And as you are coming out of your reaction, coming out of your misery, you are purifying your mind, purifying your mind, a stage will come when the mind is fully pure, totally pure. And a pure mind is full of love, infinite love, infinite compassion, infinite sympathetic joy, infinite equanimity. These are the basic characteristic of anyone who has got a pure mind. If the mind is full of love, compassion, goodwill, how can one do anything which will harm anybody else? One will only do things which will help others, which will make others also peaceful and harmonious. And that makes a big change. A healthy person, a healthy member of a healthy society. The human society can only become peaceful if each individual becomes peaceful. The society can become healthy if each individual becomes healthy. Everyone desires peace in the world. There are agitations. People agitate to get peace. I can't understand how agitation can bring peace. There must be peace within. Each individual must experience peace. And more and more people start feeling peace inside, harmony inside. Naturally, it will affect the atmosphere around you. It will affect the, the, the society. Individual must be peaceful, must be harmonious, and then you will find the society becomes harmonious, peaceful, the country becomes peaceful, and like this the entire world becomes peaceful. It may be a slow process, but can't help it. You can't force peace on people. When everybody is agitated deep inside, everybody is full of defilements, anger, hatred, ill will, animosity, and we do nothing to eradicate these impurities, and we want peace around the world. Something impossible. The entire jungle has withered away, no more green. And you want the entire jungle, you want it to become green again. You have to give water in the root of every tree. Every tree must become green, then the entire jungle will become green. Without doing that, you want the entire jungle to become green. It is impossible. Be passionized for this purpose. It deals the problem of each individual. And that is how it deals the problem of the society, the problem of the entire world. But each individual is very important and that solving the problem of each individual has to be done by that individual himself, herself. No one else can fight out your battle. You have to fight out your own battle. You have to work out your own salvation. Someone who has walked on the path and got benefit from the path, from the technique, with all the love, with all the compassion, will show you the path. Well, this is how I walked over it. You also try. You also try. Just for this purpose, one joins a course like this to learn how to fight out one's own battle. Many questions arise when someone sees a, a center like this where people are not allowed to enter, not allowed to meet the meditators, and even the meditators are asked to remain silent no conversation, no talking, then a lot of questions arise in the mind. What's going on? Some mysticism or some cult, what's going on? Why they don't allow us to see? Well, understand the whole technique is when you start observing from respiration to sensation, you are making a deep operation of your mind. When you come to the level where you experience the sensations on the body, initially you start with very gross, solidified, intensified sensations. But as you keep on practicing, practicing, you will reach very subtle, very subtle sensations, oscillation throughout the body, vibrations throughout the body. And this is something which is always felt every moment by the unconscious level of the mind. So by practicing this technique, you are moving from the gross apparent uh, surface level of the mind down to the deepest level of the mind. So it is an operation of your mind. And operation of your mind is a delicate subject. When you get a part of your body operated, 
if a surgical operation is done on any part of your body, you have to go to hospital, be in the operation theater, then you can't be talking with people. You can't allow people to come and discuss with you. You have to be kept in an area which is free from all kind of contamination. This surgical operation is a much, much more delicate work. You have to make an operation of your own mind. You have to cut yourself off. While this operation is going on, you have to cut yourself off from the entire world outside. Otherwise, there is a risk. Something wrong might happen. Those who have been running such classes, not now, but from centuries, they know that it is a very delicate job, so certain rules are there. When one comes to a hospital, one has to cut oneself from the outside world. But when one comes to the hospital, one does not come to your hospital to live in the hospital for the whole life. You gain health, then go out, live in the world. Use this health. Whatever you work here is to gain a good health and then make use of this health outside. There is no mysticism, there is no secrecy going on, but it is very important to keep the students cut off from the outside world while this operation is going on. Silence is absolutely essential when you keep on talking, 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 and you want to go to the depth of your mind, impossible. After having conversation with somebody and you sit for meditation, a lot of thoughts will start coming related to that conversation that you had, sometimes even not related to that conversation. So many thoughts will come. You have started a storm within you. The mind is such a big chatterbox already. And all, then you make it a bigger chattering box. It doesn't work. So silence at the vocal level, Silence at the physical level will take you to the stage where the mind also becomes silent. When you have to operate on the body, that part of the body which you are going to operate must be kept immobile. It can't be moving and you can't operate a moving, moving body. So also you can't operate a moving mind. Mind has to be silenced. The more and more it is silenced, the deeper the operation, the deeper the operation and you go to the deepest level of the mind and eradicate the deep-rooted complexes from it. All those negativities which one has accumulated from the past are nothing but source of misery for future. The tendency of the mind is always to multiply the negativity that one has accumulated. Once those deep-rooted impurities, negativities are taken out, the mind naturally becomes very pure. Habit pattern of the mind changes. The reacting mind now will become a mind full of positive feelings, good feelings, love, compassion, goodwill for everybody, life will change. So although it looks little odd that why in a center like this people are not allowed to come because there is nothing to, to be seen here. Everybody is sitting with closed eyes. What will one see here? No circus is going on. No yoga exercises are going on. What is, what is there to be seen? Everybody sees truth within oneself, which you can't see as an observer coming from outside. You have to see your own truth for which you join a camp like this and start observing the reality inside. Already so much things are seen outside which has not helped. Better see thing inside. The truth inside which will really help you because the misery lies inside. The cause of misery also lies inside and the way to eradicate this cause of misery also lies inside. So that's why this deep operation of the mind to reach the stage where the misery starts where you start reacting, whatever has happened outside. Something that has happened outside is nothing for you unless it comes in contact with this framework of the body. The entire world of sound is not a world of sound for you unless the sound comes in contact with your ear sense door. The entire world of vision, shape, form is no world for you unless it comes in contact at the eye, eye door. So also at the nose door, the, the tongue door, the body touch door, or the mind door. These six sense doors, by this only you come in contact with the world. The world is world for you because of these six sense doors. You start reacting within the framework of the body. At the sense door, <clears throat> you come in contact with things outside. Then you start getting a sensation inside, pleasant or unpleasant, and you start reacting to it, and you start generating your misery. You always remain blind to whatever is happening within the framework of the body 
and you try to rectify things outside, all your energy is wasted because you are not going to the deep of the pro depth of the problem. You are not going to the real deep rooted cause of your problem. You can never eradicate the deep rooted cause. And unless you eradicate the deep rooted cause, you can never be really out of your misery. There may be a temporary solution. One may feel satisfied with achieving this or achieving that, but deep inside, the habit pattern of the mind remains the same, keeps on reacting, keeps on reacting, keeps on generating and multiplying misery, misery, misery. I feel myself very fortunate that I got this wonderful technique and I came out of my misery to a certain extent and now when I start distributing it, I find thousands of people who get benefited by it. I feel full of joy to see people coming out of their misery. People come to courses with very sad faces, full of melancholy. By the time 10 days are over, they go out smiling, feel lighter, happier, and then they keep on writing later on that their life pattern has changed. They are now living a better life, a happy life, harmonious life. Certainly, one feels very joyful seeing so many people happy. An opportunity for all of you who are living around this area this wonderful hospital, this wonderful center, which will help you to go to the depth of your mind, learn the technique how to go to the depth of your mind and come out of your misery. All the causes of your misery which do not lie outside but deep inside within you, make best use of this technique for your own good, for your own benefit, for your own liberation, liberation from all the bondages and shackles and chains of cravings, aversions, Illusions, delusions, which makes everyone unhappy. Whether one is a Christian or a Jew or a Buddhist, makes no difference at all. Human being is human being. The law of nature is applicable to everyone. It does not favor a Christian. It does not favor a Buddhist. It does not favor a Muslim or a Hindu. Understand the law of nature, which is universal, and understand it not merely at the intellectual level, understand it at the actual level, at the experiential level, when you start exploring the truth within yourself, the entire law of universe, the law of nature will become so clear to you. You will know the real cause of your misery and you will know how to come out of this misery by eradicating the cause of misery. May all of you take advantage of this wonderful technique to come out of your misery, to eradicate all the defilements in your mind and enjoy real peace real harmony, real peace to you all, real harmony to you all, real harmony to you all. Thank you very much for coming this evening. Are there any questions anybody has? Don't be shy. <coughs> The subject is so clear, no questions. <laughs> oh, everybody is happy. <laughs> the Meditation Center has ongoing courses throughout the year. And we have some literature here with schedules as to when the courses are going on and uh, how one can uh, sign up for these courses and come. Also, we have some refreshments for uh, everyone here this evening. So if there's no questions, we can... I have a question. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, when you say to be happy, uh, in the face of uh, so much which is not happy, yes. um, what, what is an appropriate response when we feel the sadness of others? Uh, you feel the sadness of others, but don't become sad because of that. You remain peaceful, you remain happy, and see that you do something to take out the sadness of others. But if you join in that sadness, you multiply the sadness around you. This person is not helped, you are not helped. Sadness is there around the world, quite true. Feel that sadness and keep yourself calm, peaceful, and really happy. Then you will find a solution comes out easily. If you join the sadness, no solution can be found.
good be happy be happy <laughs> <laughs> Good, good, good. <laughs> um, I have a friend who is a quadriplegic. What are the possibilities of someone that is paralyzed from the neck down doing vipassana meditation in a retreat such as this, where they have some physical care? To... One should not uh, expect that by this vipassana medita meditation, this uh, physical illness will go away. It may go away. It has gone away in some cases. The main aim of the technique is to cure the mind. This person who is suffering from paralysis mentally is in great, great misery. At least he will learn how to live with this and remain happy, remain peaceful with that. That Vipassana will teach. And it happens. Although the aim is to purify the mind, as the mind gets purified, it also has got some influence on the body. As the mind gets defiled, it has some influence on the body, the body becomes ill. So also as the mind becomes pure, the body also becomes healthy. It may have some good result on the body also, but one should not join a course to get oneself out from any kind of physical illness. Yeah. one does not feel discomfort from some of the negative things in the world, what will be the motivation to improve these things? Motivation will be, as I said, that when the mind becomes pure, the compassion will become the motivation. You have compassion. See, everybody all around, people are sad, people are unhappy. Then you have compassion to help people. This is a very big stimulation, a good, good stimulation. Mm -hmm. Be happy, be happy. <laughs> Vipassana does not make you like vegetable that you have got no sympathy for anybody or you don't have feeling for anybody. But it, the, everything will be positive now. When you react to the sadness of people, as this gentleman said, you also become so sad because of that. It doesn't work. Or you become so excited that you take action which is more harmful. But if you are peaceful inside, you take action, you become very active. Vipassana will make you very, will give you a very active life. You will never become inactive. But the reacting part of it will go away. It will be positive. <laughs> You're saying that to quiet the body completely helps you to do this deep operation into the mind. Quite. So when you're meditating for 10 days, you wouldn't talk to anybody, you wouldn't do any physical activity. What about fasting to, you know, quiet down the digestion? Yes. For, uh, so far as fasting is concerned, we take it as an extreme. So this is a middle path. Neither total fasting is recommended, nor overeating is recommended. When you are in a course like this, naturally your food will become less. The body does not need that much because your whole day you are sitting and meditating, the metabolism becomes less. So overeating is harmful. Even your usual food that you take every day will become less. But total fasting, so far as this technique is concerned, is not, not agreeable. When I say physical silence, that means you don't have contact with people, even at the physical level. You don't uh, communicate with people with glances or uh, even by writing or reading. You keep yourself to yourself because you have to make an operation deep inside. And that is how you are silent at the vocal level, you are silent at the physical level, you find your mind also getting silent, 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 you can make a deep operation. Is such a part of their etheric body that it takes a month or two 
um, experience deep meditation, or could be the meditation that was brought up earlier is more exploited for any kind of disease? What is it? Nursing mother, mother is nursing the child. Uh-huh. It will be harmful for her to, to, to No, 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 it will be helpful. We we recommend uh, the pregnant woman to take courses to meditate because the child before birth must get this technique. What gets wonderful, <laughs> wonderful vibration comes out a good child, happy child, peaceful child. Nursing mother can practice nothing wrong. Yes, because uh, when your body becomes dirty, you take bath, you make it clean, your cloth becomes dirty, you wash it, so your, your mind keeps on becoming dirty every day, so clean it morning and evening, remain fresh. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the Orientals view the world in terms of um, view all phenomena as swinging between between two extremes, and they term them yin and yang. And I was wondering if um, if on the physical level there is looking at what's going on in that way is is it all helpful? Yes, you observe physical level as well as mental level. What these yin and yang people are doing, I do not know, because I don't represent such orientals. I represent only vipassana, because this is what I have practiced. And in vipassana, you observe both the body and the mind. You can't separate them. When you observe your mind inside, you are observing its effect on the body. Everything that arises in the mind, even a thought arises in the mind, must generate a sensation in the body. This is law of nature. So you have you started observing it. This makes the mind balanced naturally. Mm-hmm. Uh, part of the process of observing the sensations in the mind and uh, also understanding the deep-rooted complexes that you may have and how they're connected, or do you simply observe the sensations and if you see it, can what, you find it? Whatever complex, whatever impurity you have is nothing but a result of your reaction. Otherwise, it's not an impurity. And when you are observing the reality of the mind and matter manifesting itself as a sensation and you are not reacting to it, you are changing the habit pattern of the mind. You know, when you come across something unpleasant on the body, an unpleasant sensation, the old complex deep in you is nothing but a habit pattern of the mind which starts reacting with aversion towards this unpleasant sensation. So as soon as that old complex starts coming up on the surface, to react with aversion towards the unpleasant sensation, you just remain equanimous and see how far it works. You will find it arises, aversion arises, arises, passes away, passes away, you just keep on observing it, it loses all its strength, it becomes feeble. So also a pleasant sensation arises and because of the old complex, the habit is to react, to react with craving, with clinging, you start observing it, a pleasant sensation has come and look how the mind has started craving, clinging, you are equanimous, equanimous, it loses all its strength, becomes feeble, passes away. This is how you come out of all your complexes. So it's not important to understand Not necessary, otherwise it becomes an intellectual game. If you feel a sensation, oh, this sensation is because of my such past anger, or this sensation because of my passion, it won't help you. Your cloth is dirty. You go to a market, buy a soap, rub it. Clean it. You don't go into detail. This, this uh, impurity is from there, this dirt. Not necessary. The soap is there to clean everything. Vipassana cleans the whole mind. This defilement or that defilement makes no difference. <laughs> Come and give a trial. The best thing is give a trial. Yes, yes. Any question? Yes, general life, it's very important to give good exercise to the body 
all these yoga exercises and all, we recommend them. But during the course, only walking exercise. During recess period, one keeps on walking. Walking exercise, and while walking, one is aware of what is happening within the framework of the body. Good. So experience Vipassana, Jayani came, that will be the best answer <laughs> to all the questions. <laughs>